So what we've done here is we've taken some time to create an app icon, my specifications here, which I'm just getting from cordova.apache.com. Remember, all of this, I can go back to cordova.apache.com to read all the documentation. It's kind of a lot of documentation. I don't know if you've hung out there on that website to read what's there. It's pretty detailed. There's a lot, and sometimes it's a little difficult to, to read through. So that's what these handouts are for. I sort of distilled it down to like the most direct things to do. But these things are these specifications and techniques and stuff are just coming from the Cordova website. And so at this point, hopefully, you've created the four <coughs> app icons. And I'm confirming here. Here's my project, my project with the date in the res folder, in the icons folder, Android folder. And I've got the four icons in there. So now that will replace the ones I've got in my project. Let me check one quick thing and then we'll do the next part of the handout. The next part of the handout talks about the splash screen. The handout talks about, okay, you've got this icon and I'm saying here Taco Run Android. I'm going to skip this for the moment. After I've added my icons and it says check your project. I'm not going to quite do that yet. Number four, number five. I won't do number four and five yet. Uh, I'll go over to number to the next section of add a splash screen. So the splash screen is very similar conceptually in that we need some graphics, some 24-bit pings again, this time without transparency. Or else if you put transparency, you'll get weird results. As your app loads, you'll see through the splash screen onto your home screen, and it'll be weird. So this one will not use transparency. These are the dimensions, and either portrait or landscape. But our project is portrait. Our project is locked to be vertical. So notice my icons here, my splash screens, <coughs> width and height, width and height, width and height. So the height is larger, therefore it's, these are tall graphics. <coughs> if I was going to have, remember we added something in the config XML file to lock it vertical. If we didn't lock it vertical and we wanted our app to be horizontal or vertical, we would want to create uh, horizontal versions of the splash screen as well. In case someone loads up the app while they're horizontal, so they have a horizontal splash screen. We're staying portrait. And within the project folder, within the project folder, again inside of res, this time inside of, inside of screens, so inside the template project, inside of res, I've got screens, and I've got screenshot, uh, <coughs> splash screens for all the platforms, but I'm focusing on Android at the moment. And I've got the landscape one, the portrait one, landscape portrait, landscape portrait. Again, this one doesn't name it with numbers, it just says HDPI, LDPI, M, and X. So there's low DPI, low quality, uh, medium DPI, MDPI, high quality HDPI, and extra high DPI, extra high quality. So we need to replace these portrait versions with our own graphics. Um, so based on the icon that we designed here, <coughs> what I'm going to do is now create a splash screen graphic based on this one. I like what I did here. I want to reuse it now for the splash screen, which will be tall, which will be vertical. So we'll do this. Make sure your current project is saved. Go to File, Save, just to make sure. If it is saved, it won't let you save. But if you haven't saved, click Save. Sort of like with uh, Notepad. If you say if you edit something and it's not saved yet, you'll you'll see an asterisk here. Once you save it, the asterisk goes away. But anyway, make sure your file is saved and go up to Image Menu, and we've got Duplicate. <coughs> We're going to take our current project, which is designed as an app icon square. We're going to duplicate it and then change it for for the for the landscape for the portrait splash screen. So image menu, duplicate. It asks for a name and the names that we're going to need are going to be called screen
screen dash whatever. So we'll just call this screen. Actually, again, it doesn't matter, but we will call it screen dash 960. I'm about to create a new graphic based on my current graphic. And I'm calling it screen dash 960. Don't click duplicate merged layers. This will copy the current project into a new project and flatten everything. So that means you won't be able to move things around easily anymore. So don't turn on merged layers here. Um, screen-960, click OK. We get a new file. Our other file is right here. There's a tab for the icon file and there's a tab for the screen. Like, you know, like Google Chrome, you've got tabs for the different web browsers. I can have more than one file open. I've got icon 512 open and I've got screen 960 open. But screen 960 has not been saved yet. It doesn't have an extension. Icon 512 has .psd. It's been saved. It's safe on my flash drive, not screen 960. So once you've got screen 960, let's go to File, Save As. I'm saving this on my flash drive again. It should know the file name screen-960.psd. Not the PNG one yet. Not the ping yet. I'm still working on my project. Therefore, I still need this PSD with all of its layers and effects intact. So make sure you're saving your screen 960 into your flash drive. Click Save. Maximize compatibility. Click OK. That just means can you open it in an older version of Photoshop? There's a new version every 12 to 24 months or so. And if you don't maximize compatibility and you work on your project here, which we've got the latest one, and you have at home an older one, you might not be able to open it. That's why we do choose Maximize Compatibility to make sure that our project is openable on different versions. Let's go to the Image menu and select Canvas Size. Canvas Size is basically the sheet of paper we have to work with. We were working with a square sheet of paper a square sheet of paper to draw our square icon. I want a tall piece of paper. That's what image canvas size does. It changes the canvas, which I notice now we've got canvas size, but now they're calling this the artboard. This used to be called the artboard, and they forgot to change this. That should be called artboard size, not canvas size. I guess. But here it says, okay, we've got this current size in inches. Inches don't make sense on a mobile device, so change that to pixels. Okay, we've got 512 pixels. We've got a square picture. My documentation says that I need, for the largest size, 720 by 960. 720 wide 960 tall. Almost always when you see these two values, it's almost always width and height. Width first, height second. So width 720, 960. Width 720, height 960. Make sure that says pixels. If that still says, says inches, you're suddenly going to get 720 inches, which is not going to work. 720 pixels by 960 pixels tall. Everything else here, don't worry about it. Click OK. Now, uh, mine moved off to the corner here, uh, so make sure you scroll, you know, make sure you scroll around. Now, 
uh, I've used Photoshop for a long time, since the late 90s. Photoshop comes out every few years, like I said. Um, I honestly don't have a lot of experience on this latest version of it, so it's doing things that I'm not used to. If anyone has experience on the latest version of Photoshop, how do we show the rest of our canvas here? We've still got a square. Does anyone have any experience with the latest version? No? Nope. Um, <laughs> We're using Mac and Mac. That's fine, but is there a way to show? Because this is still showing the old 512 size. Um, oh, I'm not sure. Wouldn't it be image size? Image size should resize it. I don't want to do that. I just simply want to show more because I'm still seeing a square to work with. We just created a a vertical graphic. Oh, I see something. It didn't really change. Canvas. No, my canvas does say that I've gone over to. Oh, that's a square. Yeah. This is something that I'm not used to. Hmm. When I redid it, it said the canvas size is smaller than the normal size. Yeah, not sure about that. Okay, here's what we'll do. Here's a workaround. Um, let's go to File, New. Let's go up to the File menu, New. And here, name, we'll select again screen-960, <coughs> width 720, <coughs> height 960, in this case background contents says transparent, we'll select white. So. I'm sure there's a simple way to do what I'm trying to do instead of wasting that time. We'll just do this. So I'm creating a brand new file, screen-960 with 720, height 960, background contents white. It was transparent a moment ago. We don't want a transparent background anymore for our screen, our splash screen. Background contents white, click OK. Get a brand new document. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a vertical graphic. For some reason, it's still keeping it square on the other one. Um, this brand new graphic that I'm designing here, this is the right dimensions, but uh, that cool artwork that I created in the other graphic, I want to bring it into this graphic. Let me show you what I want to do, because again, this is very powerful and confusing. So let me show you what I want to do, and then we'll do it. I want to detach the previous view just by dragging it like that and then with the move tool I can move that graphic to my new graphic. So let me show you what, what, what we're going to do there. Do you see you've got tabs like a web browser? The, the screen 960 which is what we were working with a moment ago and the screen 960 that we just created. You want to be on the version with your icon click and hold and drag the tab of that graphic and pull it away over here somewhere. See now it's its own separate window. I'm going to move that over so I can see the old graphic and my new graphic. Then with the move tool, which is the very first tool at the top, click on that and then Grab your artwork, click it, and drag it into from the old graphic to the new graphic. This was my idea for doing that canvas thing. Uh, in all of the years and years that I've used, nearly 20 years that I've used Photoshop, um, the way that I was showing you was viable. But now, I haven't used this latest version, I don't know what slight, slightly different things that they changed, what I tried to do didn't quite work. So, another way is like this. We're going to take our old graphics and put it into our new graphic. We need a vertical graphic. That's the size of our phone there. Vertical, not that square one. 
So it is confusing, but did everyone manage to copy that over? Anyone need a little help?
Okay, so yes. I'm stuck. I can't see the drag this thing over to the and uh every time I try to move it around it uh it changes All right, so um, hopefully we've managed to do something like this. I've dragged my icon from that graphic into this graphic, and what I've got is this um, screen960.psd. This is the one that's not working. This is the one that still looks like a square for some reason. I'm going to close this one. Be careful because we've got this one that has not been saved yet. Don't close that one. Don't close the vertical one. Close the one that still looks like a square. So on its little window, click on the little X to close the square one. It'll complain about saving or not. Just say no. Don't worry about saving it. It's not what we want. I want to keep this rectangular one. So I've got the rectangular one. And this one I will file save as. and I will replace the one from a moment ago, screen 960, that was not behaving. <coughs> so this one that is now the vertical one, which is what I want. I'm going to save this one with the same name as the, as the other square one that, should, that wasn't working, screen 960, and then click Save. <coughs> You want to save it wherever you can find it. Again, this one's not the screenshot yet. This is our work in progress. So wherever you, wherever you want to save it, and then in a moment we'll save it where it needs to be saved. Question? No. Okay. So here it says it already exists. Click yes, because that other one wasn't what I wanted. Maximize compatibility. Okay. Okay, so finally, we've got a file that will be our splash screen and here is another opportunity for more design uh, and again since a lot of us are, are not in that realm of things we'll keep it simple I've got this icon that I've that I've put into my project and uh, I also want to add a little text we've got a text tool which means we've got lots of fonts so lots of interesting fonts to work with so on the left side we've got a tool with a T text tool, horizontal type tool. Click once on that little T to select your text tool, and then at the top it says, well here's your font, Myriad Pro Regular 12 points. If you click the drop down button where Myriad Pro is at, you've got all of these fonts with a little preview on the side, Myriad Pro Bold, something more interesting, Palace Script, <coughs> Perpetua, etc., etc., Rosewood, Ravi, Ravi, Rockwell, etc. So there's a bunch of fonts to choose from here and sizes. Um, I'm going to choose something, any one of them. Um, I'm going to start with Bauhaus 93. I'm going to select a font and then a size. 12 points is probably going to be pretty small, so I'm going to see, well, I don't know what it looks like yet, and I can change this, of course, 
but I choose any font, and I'm choosing Bauhaus 93. And then on the size, this is your size here, 12 point, I'm going to change the size to 72, a big size one, just to see what it looks like. Click at the top, and wherever you click, it'll be left aligned. So if you click right here in the middle, it'll start there and go off to the edge. I don't want that. I want to start on the left side. So if you click one time, then you can start typing here. My SDCE. The name of my app will be My SDCE. It didn't place it where I wanted, but notice when I clicked and I started to type, my cursor now looks like this little selection cursor for text. If I put my mouse away from that area, I'm still typing because the cursor is blinking, but if I put my cursor away from the typing area, it becomes a move tool. It's not, it's not intuitive, but if I move my mouse, I haven't clicked anything, if I move my mouse out over here, it becomes a move tool, and if I click and drag, I can move my text. Again, if you try to click and drag on the text, you're just going to select it. You want to move your mouse a little bit away from the text, it'll become the move tool, and then you can move it. And like Word, I can select my text, and at the top I've got a color. I can select colors of text, different colors, each different letter a different color, each different letter a different font. If I select it like, like Word, you know, I can select the word my and change my to be a different font and SDCE to be a different font. So there's a lot of nuances in Photoshop. If I've got my mouse right on my text, I can select the text. But if I've got my mouse outside of the text, I can move the text. And 72 is actually too small, in my case, with this font. I'm out of numbers here. I can type something. I can type right here. 125. I can type numbers up there to give me a bigger font. So maybe design-wise, I kind of like the, the text at the bottom. After you type the text, you can then click the check mark at the top right. But before that, you can change its color, its font, its alignment. You can do this. You can select the Create Warp Text. That'll curve your text or make it wavy or other cool stuff. You can choose the 3D uh, render text. Play with this for a moment. Choose a font, write my SDCE, place it however you want, choose colors, maybe play with some of these little settings. When you like your text, then you can click the check mark. And you can still move it with the move tool afterward. If you want to edit it again, you go back to the text tool. I'm going to give you a couple minutes, play with some text. Try to think of a little splash screen here. Anyone need a little help? <coughs>
Some of you have already seen this, but if, if you haven't seen this yet, um, I've, got, I've got my setup like this, and I can use the Move tool, and I want to move the, the, the people, the students, I want to move them up. Well, I can select the Move tool and then click and drag to move it. You can, you can move individual elements. But wait a minute, I'm trying to move now the text, and the people are moving. You have to now keep in mind that you've got different layers. So I'm currently on the shape layer. That's why the shape layer is moving. If I want to move my text layer, I have to be on the text layer, and then I can move it. So even if I put my mouse on top of the people and try to move the people, it's still going to move the text because I'm not on the right layer. So make sure you're on the correct layer to move it. Let's say you want to move both. Let's say that uh, both of them are a little bit off-center like that. If you want to move both, you know, I'm trying to move one. I want to move both. You can select multiple layers. This one's selected, it's highlighted. This one's selected, it's highlighted. If you want to select more than one layer, you hold Shift on the keyboard and you click on the ones you want to select. So then you can move them both. If you don't have them both selected, only one will move. To select more than one, click one, then shift click the other. For those of you that have a lot of layers, you have to shift click a lot of them to select. So let's say you've got some sort of icon, some sort of splash screen like that. Make sure you've been saving. Anyone need any help so far? Again, this is another thing that we can spend a bunch of time on. We're not going to focus a lot on the graphics of it because a lot of us maybe are no good at it. I don't want to force you to do something you're not good at. So what I'll, what I'll say is this, tangentially. Have you heard of the website Fiverr.com? With two R's. Fiverr.com is a website where you can go and hire people for $5 a shot to do stuff. People go there and sell their graphic design for five dollars. Write stuff or translate stuff for you for five dollars. Do music for you for five dollars. Obviously, you get what you pay for. But many of these have have a starting point of five dollars. This site's been around, I feel like maybe now ten years, seven, eight, nine, ten years. It's been around a while. Uh, and in the beginning, everything was only five dollars. But now with the explosion of um, Kickstarter and Indiegogo and all of those, GoFundMe, now there's the concept of tiers. So now what I see more, most often is someone will make you a nice logo or splash screen or whatever for $5, but they'll make you a nicer one for $10 and a nicer one for $20 and so forth. So what am I looking for? Logo design. Let's see. And then, well, if any crazy person can make any kind of logo with varying amounts of quality, what's, what's, how do I decide what's good? Um, you can, you know, preview any particular. So Zico Graphics here is selling theirs. I will make two beautiful vintage retro logo designs for five dollars. You can then click and preview. This has got three thousand five hundred people that have bought from them. So just doing some math here, $3,575 times $5, $17,000 on $5 a shot. But they also, like I said, for an extra future one day delivery, 10 bucks, <laughs> get your original source files, 15 extra, a high resolution printable one, it's not included, $15. More revisions, 
and the rights to use it, $99. Make a unique style for your logo. They'll send you for $10 the original PSD, so you can keep editing it in Photoshop yourself. So this Fiverr then, um, you know, you get what you pay for, but look at the various ratings and such, and this is something new. Orders in queue. They've got, he's, he or she, or they have 40 ahead of you if you hire them. So. <laughs> What's that? Lying, maybe. It could be their friends and family lying, sure. Um, but that's why people do these ratings. Nowadays, with all of these, with all of these sites, they're all about ratings now. And with 3,000 ratings, I'm inclined to believe that. With two ratings, I don't believe that. 10 ratings, uh, maybe not. 20 ratings, 30 ratings, 40 ratings, then I start to believe it. 3,000 ratings, I believe this. Um, so, you can't design your own uh, splash screen or logos and such? Check out Fiverr. App Icon Design. I will design professional app icon. Five dollars. He's got one. This person has one thousand. One thousand. Two hundred and thirty. Two hundred and sixty-nine. So ideas nine has three in the queue. Two hundred sixty-nine reviews. Four point nine. Sounds good. Uh, portfolio there, I guess. It's kind of in the old style, I have to say. If this portfolio is an indicator, this is sort of the older style of Android with the gradients and those drop shadows and highlights and all of that. That's a little bit more of Android, you know, 4.0. 5.0 and 6.0 is a flatter design like that, a bit more, although there's still reliance on those drop shadows and such. Um, level 2 seller, whatever that means. 99% uh, Pakistan, speaks English, average response time 1 hour, etc. This one doesn't have any extra goals. It's all for $5, that's what you get. So, here's our attempt. And this will be good enough uh, for our project. Save what you've got so far. And what I need to do, according to my handout here now, is create these different sizes just like I did for the icon and save them in the same place that I did for the icon. So let's step through that. I'm in Photoshop. I've got my splash screen. File Save, just to make sure it's saved. And then File Export Save for Web Legacy. <laughs> Make sure at the top right that it does not say transparency is on. We don't want transparency. We want a solid color there, or else when it loads, it'll load weird. If you don't want a white background, you can change matte. But I We'll stick with a plain white background. Okay, so make sure preset was set to pin 24. And then I selected no transparency. And then I went to a preset of unnamed because the default ping 24 has transparency. We don't want transparency. Dimensions. It's already should be at the size of the largest dimensions, which was 720 by 960. So you should not need to change image size. <coughs> it should be, image size should be correct. If it's not, you can then change it. But it is correct. Let's click Save. And now we need to save this in our project. So to remind you, if your project is on your desktop, go to your desktop. Mine's on my flash drive. Inside the template project. So I've got it in my apps. There's my template project. So inside of template, inside the res folder, resources, inside of screens folder, inside of Android, 
And currently, we are, we are working with the XHDPI version. My handout has them listed that way, in that order. LDPI, MDPI, HDPI, XHDPI. They're in order of low, medium, high, extra high, right there. I'm currently saving the XHDPI version. Portrait. So click once on XHDPI Portrait. It should take the name down there. Save and confirm that you're replacing the old one. Replace the existent one. And so now, I got one of the icons set to my icon. Next I'll do HDPI. My handout says H DPI will be 480 by 640. So I'll go back to Photoshop, File, Export, Save for Web. So I'm making sure it's not transparent. Width and height here is, what did I say again? 480, 640. 480. 480. 640 should then automatically change because these dimensions are linked together. If I change the width, it'll change the height because it's linked. If I want to change them independently, we can click the chain to unlink and then you'll be able to edit one or the other independently. Usually you want them linked, you want them in proportion. 640 by 480. Save. And now I'm replacing the H DPI portrait. Save that. Replace that. And next, uh, I'll do medium MDPI. My handout says MDPI is 320 by 470. File export save for web. I need 320. Now this is interesting here. I type 320 and it goes down to 427. But I need 320 by 470 and there's another one 320 by 426. This is, a, this is a case where I would turn off that lock, uh, the, the chain, break the chain, and I would want to change this one to 320 and this one to 470. Yes, 470. You cannot change them independently until you break the lock. So click on that lock, 470. Save, and this is replacing the MDPI portrait. And now you try on your own to do the last one the way I just showed you. And if anyone's having any trouble, let me know. I'm going to replace those splash screen ones. Can you put the size of the problem? Uh, yeah, it's on my handout, which is right here.
It's in the order that it's low, medium, high, extra high. So I have it in the right now. Low, medium, high, extra high. All right, so once we're done saving these things, then we're going to add a little bit of code here to to make it fully work. Uh, let's make sure we've all got that graphic, um, those four graphics. So I'm just wrapping up here with my uh, medium DPI one, and then I'll do the low DPI one, and then we'll see that finally then we can put Photoshop to the side for the moment and get back to good old programming. But uh, let me finish my last one here, 320 by 426. Remember, you want to turn off the lock there. And so we'll save that. That's the LDPI portrait. And so on my flash drive, I've got the, the all of them. I'm not going to worry about the horizontal one because we are not going to add a horizontal splash screen to our project. So I'll leave those for the moment. They're still the old... Cordova icons, we want the we want to ignore those for the moment. My handout then I can proceed over here where I've got okay, I've made app icons, I've made app splash screens. Now then uh, I've named them in the right place. And then number three, edit the project's config XML file and add the following to line nine. So we need to go back to the config XML file, edit some code there so that we can make the splash screen display for a certain amount of time. After all of that work, then we'll actually then see it on the device. We're almost there. So I'm going to move on here. Uh, for the moment, I'm going to save my work in Photoshop. And if you would like, you can close Photoshop. I've got all my graphics designed. Uh, they're in the right place. I'm going to close Photoshop because this takes a lot of resources. And I need those resources for my build process and all of that. You can close it if you want. I will because I'm also running the recorder. So I'm going to close Photoshop. Everything's saved. And, uh, okay, so you remind me. My handout says I need to edit the config file. Where's that config file? In your template folder. Great. At the root level. Easy. So go back to the top root level of your template project and you'll see config.xml. Right-click it, 
edit with notepad plus plus so remember right click if you double click it'll go to Dreamweaver you want to right click it edit with notepad plus plus and my handout says add the following to line 9 now obviously line 9 happens to work out here but on your own project what you're gonna look for you're gonna have a preference that says splash screen this default preference is looking for a file called screen and that's what we have in our project we have various files that are prefaced with screen we've got screen dash HDPI, screen dash LDPI, etc. So that preference is saying look for some files that start with screen. If we had named our files here splash screen dash low quality, then we need to make sure that our code is set, says value of splash screen. That's why it's easier oftentimes to replace the actual files than the code replace the files that already exist with our versions. So I'm not going to change line 8. <coughs> line 8 is looking for splash screens named screen. But I'm going to add a new line 9. So give yourself a new line 9 after line 8 and we'll add the same sort of format preference. <coughs> the preference tag, same syntax. Preference, name, value. We'll fill in the names and the values. Name equals value equals. We'll fill that in in a, in a moment. Space. So we have to do it this way. It's XML. It does need that slash there and that space. Preference. Make sure you spelled it right. There's examples there. Preference, name, and value. My handout then says that the name is Splash Screen Delay. You can copy and paste that, but it's Splash Screen Delay, capital S's and capital D. Each word is capitalized. Splash Screen Delay. We're going to set a value about how long to display the splash screen. The value is in milliseconds. So a value set 10,000. One millisecond equals one regular second. So 10,000 milliseconds equals how many seconds? 10 seconds. We're going to have a splash screen that displays 10 seconds, which is a huge amount of time to wait. That's OK. What I want to do here on the next instructions is the, the part of the reason for the splash screen to be on screen is for people to look at something while the innards of the app load up. So here I'm forcing it to wait 10 seconds, but that's a lot of time. Our app will probably re be ready sooner than that. So we've got a little bit of extra code there that as soon as the innards of the app are ready, it'll hide the splash screen. I don't want the I don't want to choose a number like one second, one thousand, and the app is not ready yet and suddenly it loads the app but it's not ready and it's weird so I want to just in case have it for 10 seconds I doubt that my app will be thinking for a whole 10 seconds it should load up faster than that but I want to cover the basis here so uh, that nuance of actual real time will be set in a, in a moment but I, I've waited all of this time to see my icons. I want to see if they finally work, so I will do step four, which is now I want to see this. And unfortunately, you do have to run this on a real device or a virtual device. I didn't say for you to create a virtual device, so um, I'm gonna show this on my real device. If you've got a real device, you can try plugging it in. What's that? Yeah, you reinstall your drive over here. Yes, exactly. You do have to go through that whole process. So uh, don't sweat it just yet. You do have to go through the whole process of installing the drivers again. I'm just going to show you uh, something tangibly. We'll do it together in a moment. But I've got my, um, my device plugged in. I need to get back into uh, 
the command prompt to type the command, we can go to the Start menu, but my project is on my flash drive. I'd have to type, you know, F drive and CD and all of that. Remember this trick that if you back up to the level where your apps are at, you can shift, right click your, la your, your folder, open command window here. That'll take you directly to the command prompt in the correct folder instead of doing search, node, CD this and CD that. Just shift right click your template folder and click open command window here. Type taco platform. If this is the first time, it may ask you, the first time of the day, it may ask you to, you know, share that info or not. Click yes or no, it doesn't matter. And eventually it should say that we've got Android and browser. Again, um, we're going to take a break in just a moment because we do need to set up our device. Mine's already set up, and I know this is a big tease, but I'm going to do mine. We're going to make sure we know the procedure, and then, then we'll all be able to do it. But I'm going to do taco run Android. If you don't have an Android device, taco run Android is not what you want. You want taco emulate Android. And so if you didn't create a virtual device, there's one built in. It'll launch that. You recognize my device right here, TA10 blah blah blah. If you've got a real device plugged in and it's set up, be on the lookout there. It usually zooms by, but be on the lookout for deploying to device and the name of your device. It might say deploying to emulator, it might say deploying to Nexus, because if you didn't set this up, that's what it'll want to do. So you'll see a bunch of Pac-Man dots for a moment, the first time you do it perhaps. I know mine does that, but yours might be faster. So, there's my device, and in a moment it'll pop up to show the splash screen. Is that open broadcaster software part of Taco, or is that something else? Nope, it's completely different and it's a free download. Okay, so eventually... Obviously, very exciting. It's almost here. What was the command name? Taco Run Android. Okay, here we go. Installing on device. Everyone take a quick look right here. So it's going to install. Here it comes. 
splash screen, and then we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then Cordova starts. Thank you. And then if I go over to my apps icons, um, it's my it's, it's I think it's still called template. Yeah, it is. Template. Yeah, down there. So see, it's also an icon right there. Template app. So, if yours worked, great. We're going to take a break if it didn't to make sure everyone's on the right track. Um, here's the big catch. You have to install your drivers again. Remember, every time we turn off these computers, it forgets everything that you did. So the driver that you downloaded last time, I remember I told you, when you find your driver, save it to your flash drive to bring it back with you. So uh, if you didn't save it, you'll have to find it again online. Run that driver installation again, then plug in your device, then do Taco Run Android if you've got an Android device. If you don't, then you want Taco Emulate Android. Let's see if we can get that splash screen to load. If it works, it'll load for 10 seconds, which is an eternity. After the break, we will add some more code so that it automatically cuts out once when no longer necessary. It's 8.35. We'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 8.45. If you need any help, call me over.